acting as a form of starch. Amylopectin, like amylose, consists consists of alpha glucose subunits. Alpha glucose subunits. So they resemble with amylose the monosaccharide that makes them up. But in a myopectin, in a myopectin, we have one four glycosidic linkages, glycosidic bonds, and one six. Glycosidic bonds. So the major difference comes in from here. That is meaning that amylopectin is branched. Amylopectin is branched. How does the branch arise? So amylopectin, this is our alpha glucose this is carbon atom carbon atom number one Carbon atom number two, carbon atom number three, number four, number five, number six. So this is our alpha glucose. We just say that is H or H. The others, even if we don't take note of them at large. How does the branch? One for glycosidic bond, as we saw, one for glycosidic bond is between carbon atom number four of the other side. If I have to just draw something here. The bonds are supposed to be straight. So this is another alpha glucose molecule, right? number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, coming to number six. The one for glycosidic bonds we saw earlier are here between this carbon atom, which is having OH here. We saw how it is established. That we're going to establish a wonderful glycosidic bond in this region by replacing this 20 minute what we called it a condensation kind of polymerization. So it means we have the wonderful glycosidic bond is going to be here. That is our one carbon atom number one and carbon atom number four. So that is our one for glycosidic bond. So how does the one six glycosidic bond appear then? Allow me to lab off this to illustrate it up here now. So the one for glycosidic bond is between carbon atom number one and carbon atom number four. Carbon atom one six glycosidic bond it will mean we have we have carbon here, another sugar, let's say here. Sugar 
juga diam that hmm? so this being our number one number two number three number four number five number six so we have just inverted this true so if it is between carbon atom number one and carbon atom number six it means we have our h or h here in our alpha glucose then in this carbon atom number six here we put the six here remember it has ch2 but it has also the oh here So a bond is established to eliminate water still, it is still a glycosidic bond. But now this time between carbon atom number one and carbon atom number six. So it means the establishment of this bond here we are going to establish a bond that is going to appear more like this. It's going to appear more like that. So that one becomes a one, six, glyco, sidiki, bond. In our myopectin, and this, a one four glyco CDK bond. So for that matter, therefore, amylopectin is branched. So you find the continuous chain with the branch. Then another continuous chain with a branch, and so it can it branches. So this would be branch T amino pectin. So it is a common. It is a common uh, starch that is found in foodstuffs. The ones we listed earlier, the tubers, the cereals, contain majorly amylopectin. So meaning that amylopectin and amylose can be hydrolyzed to simple sugars by amylase enzyme. Amylase enzyme present in our bodies Salivary gland can produce amylase enzyme and the pancreas can also produce amylase enzyme. Lastly, on amylopectin, amylopectin is stained red violet, is stained red violet by Iodine solution. Iodine solution. So meaning, when you are testing for presence of starch in a food substance, you are going to get a mixture of colors. Amylose giving us blue, black, or blue. Then amylopectin giving us red, violet. And that is our test. So in our next session, we shall discuss more. How do I test for starch? The procedures, then we compare amylopectin and amylose. That's all for this session.